you fly out uh, into Vegas and you look for a guy that's got a, a big red, like number 13, I believe it was. And they load you up in a van, take you uh, over to the palace station where they take, they come in with a trash bag and they take all your stuff that you can have on the on the show. So your phone, wallet, keys, and pretty much your life. And then they take, uh, they put uh, duct tape over all your clothes that with symbols or anything like that that you can't have on, on TV. And then you just wait. You know, you, you sit in the hotel room for uh, nine days. You can't work out. You know, you just pretty much just got to sweat while you're in there. You know, move the beds around, whatever you got to do. And then, uh, you know, keep walking your weight down. And then you weigh in. And then you fight. Fight to get in the house. And uh, I, I actually I got paired up with uh, an ex-teammate of mine, uh, Akbar. Which uh, I, I knew from training that was just a very, very tough guy, so I was really nervous about that one. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to like like beating up my friends. You know, it's something that I don't, I don't really like, like to do. So I wasn't, you know, so, so thrilled about it. But uh, you know, I, I went out there and I, I fought, and uh, you know, I won, got the decision. And then as soon as you win, they take you right from the Las Vegas to training center right there, and uh, they they don't you don't even go back to the hotel. You take take you straight to the house. You walk in the house, big old mansion. I, I automatically ran back upstairs, you know, got my bed that I, I left in, you know, season 13. I got the exact same bed, so that was pretty cool. And uh, all your bags are already, like, at, at the house and stuff, because so they take you straight there. And then that's where all the fun fun begins. You wake up the next morning, and uh, we had uh, the fight picks, or not the fight, but the team picks. Um, and then we had our, our fighter, like, uh, you know, evaluation with our team and everything like that. And it's pretty grimy, you know, everybody fought last night, so everybody's all beat up that morning. We're all just in there, just pushing ourselves. My knees were both scaped up. I had like a knot on my head. My back was like a little tweaked. I was, I was just pretty beat up. And then uh, you get, you get your teams, you do your evaluations, and then you go back to the house. And then all the training starts. Um, pretty, pretty much the the biggest thing with the house is just the the mental game of it. You know, just your mind plays tricks on you while you're in there, and uh, it's, it's it's really crazy. It's one of those things where it's hard to explain unless you've you know been there. So. It's it's really a, a big mental game, and then uh, a couple of people in there I, I clicked up pretty good with was Sam, Sam Silla, um, pretty much the whole red team. I, I love those guys. There was nobody that I really didn't like. You know, sometimes you know Tickle and Crookshank, they were you know the louder ones in, in the house. So they got a little annoying sometimes, but you know they're 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 cool guys and everything like that. I got along with everybody. Um, a lot of good friends, a lot of good experiences. It's probably one of the, the biggest things that I learned from that whole show is just, you know, that, that I, I took from it is just the experience and the, the mental training and all, all the experiences that you get that make you a better person, tougher, more mental, uh, all those situations, those are like, you know, the, the big pluses out of it coming out of that house. Um, so then, you know, I fight. Uh, when I fought Al, when you, when you fight in the, the house, if you lose, you still get to stay there, obviously, but you're still training for a whole other fight. And when I, when I lost to Al, I... Uh, I took it like I, I, every other Ultimate Fighter season, somebody got hurt, so I was like, "There's, I'm for sure gonna get back in here." So I kept training like I had a fight. The fight didn't go, you know, didn't come through back in the tournament, but I ended up getting a, another fight with Chris Saunders on the finale card, which that is a whole crazy, crazy situation. Uh, after the semifinals that night, they give you uh, your phone and wallet, ID, keys, all that stuff. They give it to you. They give it back to you, and they throw you in a van, and they take you straight from being on camera for 24-7, no contact with anybody, they give you your phone and they take you straight to the hotel, you don't even have to go back to the to the house or anything like that, so you're a free man that night, so everybody's just crazy, everybody's, you know, calling, you know, people are like, want to tear up, you know, they haven't talked to people in so, so long and everything, and uh, it's, it's hard though, because as soon as you get out, it's the beginning of your fight week, so I got out that Friday, I had to fight literally one week after that, which was crazy, uh, Trying to catch up with everybody, you know. I called like, uh, you know, my friends, my mom that night, my my stepfather, just texting like crazy. My phone's just going boo boo boo, just you know, going crazy. But uh, you know, it's been three months since you know ever, anybody's ever talked to me, so you know, a lot of left messages and whatnot. So that whole fight week, it's something that you really gotta you know buckle down to because there's so many like temptations that are pulling you each way. You still gotta stay focused on the the goal of you know that fight. It's, it's your biggest fight of your life, and it doesn't even feel like it. So that's a big big mental thing that you know I really really was hard you know to, to get over but but I did it um, so now I'm just gonna I got a couple questions that people asked on the, the forum let me see here underground UG love this place been posting here since I was like 13 how do how did the guys guard against overtraining 
Uh, Dominic Cruz and, and the staff are very smart about that. Uh, like especially when people had fights coming up, they we would limit out certain things like hard sparring. We would cut that out just because of the injuries and the how many times a you know a month you're fighting. We cut cut back on a lot, a lot of live or we do would do situational goals a lot. So there wasn't you know just pretty much lo lowering the risk of uh, injuries slash overtraining. But we we did every day pretty much you know blow your lungs out pretty good and and get a good workout in Kansas. Cornet. Uh, Howard Faber and Cruz off camera. They're the same off camera as I think they're on camera as they portray. They they just really don't like each other. Uh, you know they, they can't really be sitting around each other. You can just cut the tension with a knife. So they just definitely do not like being around each other. Any sleepwalkers or talkers on the show? No sleepwalkers. Uh, I never caught anybody walking around uh, sleepwalking. When you're on the show too, you don't get you get no magazines, no books, no music set. No, no headphones, no, obviously no phone, no TV, no magazines, nothing. No communication with the outside world at all. Uh, about once or twice a week, the, some PR ladies would come over, and uh, really nice, uh, really nice ladies, um, Bella, definitely, and Kristen. They're they're awesome. It was like every time they came over, it was like almost like Christmas time because we got to give them our tweets, but they had to type them in and all, all that stuff. But but we had, we got to give them that, and so it kind of felt like we we're getting. You know, to touch base with people, even though we couldn't like get any responses back, but we we could still tell people how we were doing. Uh, when Ronda Rousey came over, it was pretty crazy. Uh, you know, being locked up there for 13 weeks, no no girls, and then Ronda comes in. I mean, honestly, you know, even if it wasn't Ronda Rousey, it was just like uh, you know, any girl. I mean, being locked up for 13 weeks, it you know definitely get all excited. U G C T T David, and they met. Did you develop any friendships that uh, you expect to continue? Definitely, I feel like uh, I keep it I'm going to keep in touch with all these guys, you know. Uh, I talked to Sam last night. I'm going to probably hit up Lawrence here soon. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, definitely a lot of, you know, relationships that are going to go for a while. Did you get pranked? No, I didn't, I didn't get pranked. Um, pretty much, you know, the, the pranking was just between kind of like the Crookshank and uh, Larson, or not Larson, but Lawrence. And uh, Vince and them, they, they were pranking each other a little bit. Proctor got, got hit up a little bit too. How much shooting does the camera crew do that you guys don't get to see? I mean, that the camera's on you 24 seven. When you go to the bathroom, there's one sitting right down on you. When you, even in the showers, I mean, there's, there's ones right in there, everywhere. Cameras, you gotta have a microphone too that you, you carry around. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're definitely taping you 24 seven. Do you feel like you improved a lot over the 13 weeks? I feel like I improved so much. The, the biggest one being mentally, uh, you know, it's more just stronger about myself, about, you know, my future, my, you know, even my past, everything. And I just feel so much more stronger, so much experience, almost like a, like a wisdom you get from being on the house. It's, it's crazy. And I definitely feel a lot better. Before the, uh, the competition started, whose team did you want to be on? I definitely want to be on uh, Cruz's. You know, I, I feel like I just related better to him and his coaches. And, uh, you know, I like their style. I like their, their mentality. I, I just like everything about them. I, I didn't have no problem with favor, but, uh, I just, I just knew I wanted to be on uh, Team Cruiser. What were you thinking the first night you got into the house? The first night I got into the house, I didn't even sleep hardly but two hours. I sat there and laying in my bed for the next seven hours, and we had to be up early that morning too, so I, I couldn't even sleep that night. I, I was very nervous. Um, I, I feel like it's something that I'm, I'm getting better at. I, I call it being nervous. I call it like my alert system. Like my body's telling me, hey, you know, it's time to you know, you know, go out there and you know, whoop some butt and stuff like that. But at the same time, I gotta tell myself there's not much you can do. Just thinking and worrying about the fight that that doesn't do anything for you. So I just tell myself that you know there's nothing I can do right now. Just uh, you know when the fight comes, I'll be ready to rock. Uh, UGCT Ninja, does the production team push you guys to taunt each other, pull pranks, or get into beefs for the drama? The production doesn't push you to do anything but be yourself, 100%. Uh, there's it's it's literally like 100% real show. I think that's another the, the great thing about it. Is uh, they they're not trying to be anybody or anything like that. It's just you know who the people are telling their stories. Jefferson, Darcy choke. How often were you were you you guys just jerking it in the bathroom and did anyone ever get caught? Uh, me personally, I, I didn't honestly, uh, <laughs> but I think a lot of people did. I know Kofer was jerked off in the shower a couple times. I know that man. I think I almost walked in on one time. It was a little weird. So I just kept walking, uh, but he admitted it too that he jerked off in the shower. I hope I'm not throwing him under the bus right there. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Kofer jerking off. I, I think a lot of guys did.